Hello and welcome to the Valley Arts Center, where we proudly present the Big Ass Art Show in one of four locations throughout Northeast Ohio. Get ready to be blown away by larger-than-life masterpieces from some of the most talented artists in our region. From massive realist and abstract expressionist oil paintings to breathtaking sculptures and awe-inspiring assemblages, this exhibition is a celebration of creativity on a grand scale. Because the exhibition includes only 10 artists, we let the artists describe their artwork in their own words, which I will be sharing with you today. The first of these works is Love by Lee Brooklyn. In the artist's own words, love is a depiction of a newly married couple that I encountered when I was in downtown Los Angeles pursuing street photography. Upon first meeting them, I knew I would wanted to paint them. Their love was palpable and their combined style was interesting and innovative. I was instantly drawn to their funky hair and matching denim and with all the patches. They agreed to let me photograph them and I was able to capture this candid and seemingly intimate moment of them looking deeply into each other's eyes. And it really spoke to me. Amongst all the loud cars and people in the city, they managed to have this quiet and very private moment. It was very beautiful. After this chance encounter, I discovered this couple was not only in love, but identified as transgender. A closer look at their clothing so shows a patch inscribed with the words pretty boy and fingernails that are painted with the transgender flag. Despite our current cultural war over transgender identity, they find acceptance through one another. They have something that unites us all. They have found love. The next artwork comes from artist Don Lizzie and is an incredible 120 by 72 inches. Getting its name from a line from the TV show Parks and Recreation, Sit Forward and Take It Hard is an ostentatious abstraction from action painter Don Lizzie. Lizzie's expression provides a venture into the infinite possibilities, immersion to the vast landscape of emotive struggle and depth. The next artwork is Loam Bowl and Clunch from Raymond Bugelski, a three-part assemblage. In the words of the artist, this body of work is the result of my obsession with collecting peculiar objects and repurposing them through juxtaposition and surgically altering their original form. Taking everyday objects and manipulating them into pieces of art while avoiding the stipulations of classically accepted mediums is a testament to my creative mindset. The marriage of surrealism's dream-laden fetish for the grotesque and pop art celebration of popular imagery superimposed into a composition which pays homage to the geometric abstraction while infusing lysergic shapes establishes a cynical dimension to lay out my parable. The creation of man from clay is a miraculous birth theme that recurs throughout world religions and mythologies. The plasticity of the material gives lights to its symbolic meaning, but as an artist, I'm most interested in whom did the creating, not what was created. A symbol is a physical thing that stands for an idea. By splicing together archetypal symbols, I hope to explain how this great mystery unfolded, thus providing a new twist on a story as old as dirt. Will Wilson's painting, Grounded, is incredible 128 by 97.5 inches. In the artist's words, much of my work deals with nature and the way that being in nature and around natural forms is energizing, healing, and inspiring. Next up is The Love Tester by Violet Mainberg. The feeling of love may seem to be a mystical force that humans crave and need, but at the end of life, there is a universal truth that is indisputable. Step right up to The Love Tester, where innocent hearts and minds will learn their fate from which one cannot escape. The next painting is from John A. Sargent III and is 213 by 72 inches. The artist says about this painting, this was created 33 years ago, emerged from the foundation of all of my ensuing artistic efforts. My mantra then was, there should be no aboutness about it. My absurd artistic intentions were to transcend narrative into a territory of transformative and memorably real experience. I can't justify that inspiration now, the way that I had then hypothesized. It now occurs to me that this painting, like all of my paintings, was a meditation and marination that caught a particular set of concerns and experiences and wrestled them into a visually coherent composition. There were and are questions that are posed. What is meaning? What is purpose? What is the point? This can occur as transformative, but also as confrontational or just dumb. 
It is ironic to me that most of my sold artwork operates in a territory of attractive memory and comfort. Life and nature are clear and opaque and at the same time impossibly mysterious and oblique. We think we know what we are doing until all of that is challenged and revealed to be absurd. This is to say the painting is open to interpretation. Painter Sam Roth explains their next piece. People often ask me if I had a preconceived idea when I begin painting. Being an abstract artist, this idea develops as I paint layer upon layer, 40 or more coats on most paintings. Then I add gestures or brush strokes that I wipe over or enhance. That starts a narrative, an introduction to the painting that helps the viewer interpret what they see and feel. The intention of my art is to open your eyes and mind to become part of the creative process. The next piece is from painter Alex Strasko. In the artist's words, capturing the moment of how the complexities of our perception of sound corresponds to a design, my primary interest lies within the interpretation of the visual possessing audio qualities. There's a strong relationship between the waveform of sound and the wavelength of light as depicted in my art. I am captivated by the interplay of light and color and form and illusion in conjunction with depth and space. Blending patterns with landscape, my intention is to create a space for the viewer to occupy and traverse through introspection. With confident yet gentle palettes, Bonnie McCormick uses color vibrancy and a focus with materiality with oil paint. The wallpaper with its systematic abstracted patterns, decorative with carefully planned color relationships, makes visible the invisible, the intangible real. Something rarely focused on, the wallpaper itself, becomes a subject of the painting. No longer the background shell of a room, it is now a haptic living experience. Here they dance through floral swirls and vibrating shimmering color and remind us of the rarefied beauty of treasure so hard to come by, a real home. In her final artwork today, Diana Rice uses both symbols and objects to create physical frames. These symbols and objects evoke a sense of familiarity, but also are transient to the viewer. Quick sketches populate the hanging installations pieced together with openings and windows throughout. It's an unspecific web of her mind's fixations, and it serves as a scaffolding for the more intimate circumstances of each painting. The paper installations and paintings are physically made up of these things. Canvases sewn together, found wood, found paper, string, etc. The images are fragmented in how they are painted and how the surfaces are painted on. The subject matter becomes reduced to fields of color of rough and gestural brush strokes. Although each piece comprises different physical fragments, they all share a dialogue of how we may piece together the mundane moments of life. This body of work is a deeply personal consideration of the aesthetics of daily life and a celebration of the unremarkable. Thank you so much for watching today, and we hope to see you soon.